Zillow is out with its third quarter results. The company topping estimates on the top and bottom line. Shares are under pressure, though, in after hours trading right now. They're down some 4%. And uh, that, by the way, uh, is after a 15% gain in the shares this year. But definitely it has been a volatile year for Zillow. Let's run through some of the numbers here. Revenue of $496 million did beat the average analyst estimate. Um, And if you look at here, the website traffic for the company, more than 2.6 billion visits to Zillow's sites and apps in the quarter was down about 5% from the same period last year. I know you and I uh, are people who have looked at Zillow. I spent too much time on Zillow. You know what the favorite thing to do is on Zillow, you plug in the amount of money you would spend, for example, in the tri-state area into another area of the country. That's just a sick game. Oh, I play with my. Why would you do that? I don't know. I don't know why I do it. It's not even fun. Oh. It puts me in a bad mood, and yet I can't stop doing it. It's a weird addiction. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, we also <laughs> had, of course, under scrutiny because this Missouri jury decided we had that, those headlines. This Missouri, a jury decided that the National Association of Realtors colluded uh, to keep aging commissions artificially high. Right. Now, in a letter to shareholders, we should mention CEO of Zillow, Rich, Rich Barton, said the company could thrive even given a complete disruption to the existence of buyer's agents and said apparently he views the scenario as unlikely. It would not, in his opinion, be good news for consumers, but he said it, it may lead to, in his words, a larger and more profitable business model for Zillow. Yeah, so if you look at the company's core business of connecting um, people who are looking for homes with real estate agents, that core business revenue there down 3% from $362 million dollars, that is sort of a smaller decline than in the broader industry in the number of, re- of transactions. So to put that sort of in perspective there. But um, there are a lot of questions about that recent ruling, about some other outstanding cases that are similar, what effect they're going to have on the brokers, on Zillow, on the broader industry, what the timeline is. So it's a confusing time for those who are buying a house, those who are investing in these companies as we look at some of those uh, recent rulings and even as we look at these numbers.